All the time. A lot of the paintings I've made have been like this apex moment where like all of the awesome shit is happening, fireworks are exploding, people are together, and it's just, it's frozen in this painting forever. And it's, it is sad and it's beautiful and it's kind of like dark and it's light at the same time. And I like that tension because that's what makes life so fascinating. The, the difficulty of like actually getting to that moment. I think somebody said to me in passing one day, like, why don't you try to see what this is like in real life? And I was like, oh, that's, that sounds even better than making a painting. Like, let's, let's see what that's like right now. And so I organized the group hug and that was my first one group hug was like the, the best. It was so unexpected and I really was so nervous and I didn't know if anybody was going to come and it was it was so amazing like the, the the happiness and the joy that came out of everybody and it sounds cheesy but if you were there like every single person came up to me at the end and was like that was the most amazing thing like I've ever experienced. The next one that I did I did a, a group peace sign and I wanted everybody to stand in the shape of a peace sign at a peace rally in Dolores Park and then fall into each other like trust falls, like a domino. I had this like, you know, big choreographed idea and that one was just like, oh, it's awful. Like I was up on a hill trying to like give them a signal. Like when I put my arms down, like everybody falls into each other's arms and it will be amazing and magical, except that like they start mimicking me. So everybody was mimicking and then they were falling on mismatch and it was just, in the end, like I went home, I was disappointed that it wasn't like as beautiful as I wanted it to be, but then it dawned on me that you can't really force these kind of interactions. And then that pushed my practice in a whole other way. I realized that by just letting go and like seeing if it just kind of emerges on its own, like it's way more interesting. I don't want to be this like conductor, you know, that's like, this is what should happen. And you know, that that's fascist. <laughs> majority of the time I'm surprised by how many people actually really want to do this stuff though and how it really changes them and how it like shifts their perspective and how into it people can be. I'm always afraid I'm being kind of like dorky or like too hippie or too into this stuff but they want to they want to connect people essentially that's what we're you know we're sharing the world and that's what they want to do and it's interesting and it informs my paintings like monumentally like it's really shifted kind of like how I I don't need to make like hyper illustrative situations of like, about my own like daydreams about what I wish could happen because I'm actually playing that out with the social projects that I do. Now I have this freedom in my paintings to just push the boundaries of what I think paintings can do. Like make paintings more social, you know, like now I'm trying to, like this painting is a painting of the rug that I paint on and when I install it in a gallery, I. I put it on the floor and I ask people to walk over it to look at another one of my paintings on the wall. You know, and slowly the painting will be worn away like with the, the tracks of the feet. The two, the two practices are kind of like coming together slowly. I think my interest in communal uh, activities started when I moved up to San Francisco. I lived with a commune for a year with jump, a bunch of German students came over and we lived in this giant house in Ocean, Ocean Beach and kind of collaborated over the course of a year on a bunch of different exhibitions and uh, projects. And I think that was probably one of the biggest influences in my practice. I think I was interested in the idea of utopia for a long time and really like pursuing kind of what that was and doing a lot of research and reading on that. And then I slowly started to veer as I started getting more involved or more interested in anthropology and like specifically like so social anthropology and I read uh, this book called Crowds in Power by Elias Canetti and he really talked about like what happens when people like physically come together like in hordes and in crowds and like the manner of like how people can drop their defenses when you're like even just standing in a concert and you're like pressed up against somebody how suddenly that's not threatening anymore but yet like our day-to-day -day lives just being next door to like a neighbor you won't even know your neighbor and you're like somehow threatened if you like pass them in the hallway i thought that was like pfft, that blew my mind at the time so i've been kind of like going because utopia is a great idea but like i said about peace you know it, it's not it's not attainable and it's more like this disillusionment of like society of like you're kind of putting your daydreams on it, but I don't know how healthy that is. I'm 
from LA, from Los Feliz. I grew up there, uh, lived there my whole life, moved up here in 2006. When I moved up here, I just, I felt safe to make any type of work I wanted to. And I felt that people responded to it in a really like warm and open and like honest and people want to share their experiences with me too. And it's, it's communal and it's nice, I like it. It sounds really hippie, oh man. <laughs> But it's good. Do you think we must have danced up into the sky? People who talk about my work are very much like, oh, these hippies, you know, and you're really like Northern California. I don't know what that means though, because it's funny. I'm like, really? Because I'm, I don't, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I am. What's wrong with that? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with that. <laughs>